Hello traders, this is day number 10 of testing my small cap market open day trading plan. We've now taken 19 trades. I took two of those today and I'm going to show you the trade in just a second. Let's take a look at the screener first. I use a small cap screener based on the kind of textbook criteria of small cap stocks and then I'm trading the price range of five to hundred dollars per share. I organize the list by volume. Also, make sure I like to remind you and myself because these filters will not be applied if you do not cl uh, click on these three dots and click modify. So that's extremely crucial, especially if you if you flip through a few different screeners, you have to do that in each screener. Otherwise, everything doesn't get applied properly. So now that we're on the small cap screener, I click on volume. It's much later. It's actually almost market closed. I didn't ha have time to record this video after I finished trading this morning, um, but this is how I go through it in the morning. As I organize by volume, I'm looking for stocks that are moving up in price, so they must have a green percent change. I like to see 5% or more before I consider trading them or even evaluating them on the chart. And then the price is already worked into the filter, so I don't have to worry about that. And the volume that I want to see at the open is 500,000 shares or more. Obviously, we're at almost at market close, so you're seeing much larger volumes. And I do prefer to see stocks that have a higher relative volume to their average volume. So we will show you the three month average volume. So for example, look at a stock like GREE, which was not up this morning, um, but you can see how it has uh, almost, well, it's approaching a 10 times uh, relative volume to its average volume. So. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking for. We don't always get it. Uh, if not, I take the highest volume stock with percent change over 5%. So let's take a look at the video now. So you can see, actually, here's GREE. So that was up this morning. I forgot about it. Now, like as I said, it's so many hours later. Uh, but why didn't I why didn't I trade this one? Is because it does not meet my chart criteria. So I'm on the daily chart right now, and you notice that GREE does not have a 200 MA, a 200 moving average on the daily chart. So there's not enough history here to define a long-term trend. And if you look at the short-term trend, it's obviously down, it's gapping up right now. And whether or not this thing was a good trade, it doesn't matter because it does not meet my plan criteria. So it's basically off the table and you'll see me remove it in just a moment. So then I'm just opening up my two-hour calculator. So here is um, PRQR that met the screener criteria and now I'm marking out the previous high. That's my first indication that price action is strong, that there are buyers interested in the stock is not the marking out of that, but the breaking out of that level. And then there's two other levels that I need to see hit before I can take a trade. So that's why I'm getting in the habit of just throwing out these three lines once I have kind of approved the ticker symbol to be on my chart page. And that way I remember not to take a trade until I've at least been able to move those three lines into position. That helps me from um, breaking my plan accidentally. So, and then CL, CLSK, I believe, uh, was not above the 200 MA on the daily chart. So even though the price action looks pretty nice there, um, it was it got removed from my chart. So. Let's see, there's a couple other ticker symbols, BKD. I'm fast forwarding here. So you can see how these guys did not break out. Actually, BKD broke out over its previous high, but then um, never made it up to a new high. And then this purple line represents where the 200 MA is on the daily chart. All of this price action here is below the 200 MA on the daily. So I even if, say, the three lines were already touched, um, if the price is below the 200 MA, I can't take a trade. So this line would have to be met above that purple line if that makes sense so again just showing you how you know i have very strict criteria and i only trade price action i only trade stocks that meet that criteria otherwise i can't really tell if after 100 trades what i'm doing is working you know do is my criteria working if you have too many variations in the setups that you're taking and you don't always use the same criteria then you may just be tracking how lucky you are uh, versus how well your trading plan or trading system works because you really don't have a trading plan or trading system unless you're able to do the same thing every single day. All right, so now I'm just creating some alerts because things were kind of moving slow and that's pretty helpful. If you want to walk away, then you don't have to just sit here and watch the charts. Okay, now here, oh, so SLI, I don't think, okay, now this one actually, SLI had a good setup and met my daily chart criteria, but 
I guess it wasn't on the screener either. I missed it, which I don't think so because it popped up on the screener much later. But when this happens, when all of my criteria are met, then I have to see, okay, where would my first entry have been? And if my first entry went to 2R without me, then that means that I don't trade the stock. In fact, actually, I'm just reminding myself as I'm making this video, when this happens, I'm actually supposed to stop trading for the day because, well, this one is kind of a, a bit of a gray area because as I said, this was not on the screener. So um, I'll have to really think about this actually. It, you know, is this a case where I should just stop trading for the day or not? Um, so anyway, this is why I make these videos because when I, and this is why I prefer doing these recaps over live trading is because things like this crop up and I realize maybe I did make an error while I was trading. So the point of, of showing this chart is showing that it did hit 2R based on my ideal entry, the first entry that I would have taken. It just was not on my chart at, at the time uh, that all of this price action was happening. So sometimes it's going to happen. That's definitely the exception to the rule, but you're not going to catch everything. Even if you have a really strict plan and criteria, you're not going to be able to catch all the opportunities every day. That's all part of uh, day trading. So here's a great example of it. So let's fast forward and see what I did trade. MMAT, that one was a weird one. You can see that all of my lines were hit by one cent. Um, but then once the price action started falling, which is what I would have to wait for to get in, uh, you know, get in on a pullback, the 5% um, change that I told you that I look for on the screener was only met right at this area. So I don't think that uh, there was any way I really could have traded this because if I got in after a pullback down here, the percent change would be well below my threshold for looking for a trade on the stock. So you'll see me remove MMAT in just a moment. And again, I don't go back to those later in the day to see, well, what if I would have taken a trade? You know, I made the decision based on my trading plan not to trade it. It did not meet the criteria. So um, any any trade that I could have taken that would have gone to 2R would have been a break of the plan. So anyway, let's take a look at LICY. This is the one I did take two trades on. So this first yellow line is the previous high, and that was established in the pre-market. I want to see that level broken before I even consider taking a trade and then I need to see a new high established or high of day established uh, actually so the first high of day after the the previous high is broken that's what this second yellow line is then once that happens I need to see a new high and again this one very similar to MMAT it was kind of making these new highs by one cent sorry I'm trying to get to where I blew it up into one single chart so here's the break of the previous session and this is the first high of day established. It happened all on the uh, same candle. And there is the break of the high of day. Let's see, am I reading this right? I might have misplaced some of these lines or something. I think I'm gonna adjust these lines in just a moment. This is actually, yes, I think I move them because this is the high of day. The first high of day is right here. Maybe I just never move the line, but um, so, and then this is the new high of day. So let's see. Yes. And the reason why I am defining that to be such is because this is a pullback on this red candle. So the price opened up here, it closed here. So that is a pullback. It just happened to happen all in one single candle. And then the price on this candle opened up here and broke out above it at one point. At one point, this was a green candle. It broke out above it. So that established a new high, even though it didn't hold, that was a new high uh, within that candle. And then this is the pullback. And then my entry is the first one minute candle to make a new high. And that happens right here at 12.32. Let me just show you that in real time. Okay, so I'm just waiting to see, I believe 12.32. So this candle, the high must have been 12.31. So let's watch this price bubble. It happens in just a moment here. There's 12.32. You can see I've triggered my hotkeys and I get filled immediately and I get filled one cent below. And that happens because the price sometimes oscillates around your entry. So now I move my stop loss up. That is absolutely the most important thing to do is to move your stop loss into the proper position based on your plan. 
and do do not hesitate because sometimes you get triggered with a like a false breakout and these things turn around and flush down especially small caps they flush down on you right away and you might take a huge hit if you didn't get your stop loss in place uh, quickly enough. So now I'm using my 2R calculator, which is very handy. If you're interested in that, I also have other calculators that let you calculate any profit target you want. Um, you can just put in a factor, you know, of 1.5 or 3 or whatever, and it'll spit out your profit target based on your entry and your stop loss. So those are all available on my Patreon, which is trading, sorry, patreon.com slash trading armor. And let's take a look now what happened with this trade. Okay, it stopped me out, which again, you know, th this is what we're testing. We're testing this entry criteria. So whether or not th this trade works or stops out is really irrelevant at this point. Um, we're collecting data right now. And that's why I'm only trading with one single share. I am using real money because you you could, of course, do this in paper trading, but the fills are not nearly the same in paper trading as they are uh, it, with real money because you're not actually buying any shares. So it's much more beneficial to do this with real money. And even though I'm only trading with one share, I still realize that I am risking real money. So there is an emotional uh, counterpart to that, which you do not get with paper trading. All right. So now when that happens, when I get stopped out, I have to enter for the next one minute candle to make a new high. I chose this, this red line here is basically where I'm going to say that this stock becomes weak and whether or not that ends up being right throughout the rest of the day it doesn't matter there's a reason why i chose this level it's because after uh, a nice run up the price pulled back down and then a bunch of buyers came in and pushed it up even more so there should be buyers there if there's not then i deem this stock to be weak and again that could end up being right or wrong but it doesn't matter the main thing is that you pick a level based on price action that makes sense logically and this does um, remember there the previous high from the pre-market is over here so we're already in a bit of a weakened state as we're trading below that level and now um, I just wait for the price action to do one of two things either come down and break below this red line which would mean I stop trading for the day or if it makes uh, if one minute candle makes a new high before breaking down below this red line it must break below it by the way um, then I can take another entry. So let's see what happens. So look what happened here. It came down. I did not move that line. It came down exactly to that line and bounced off. So it has to break through that line in order for me to stop trading it. And it hasn't done that. So let's take a look at... Okay, here's the next entry. Let me back it up and show you that in real time. I'm waiting for the, the high of this red candle right here to be broken. So watch the price bubble. Okay, there it breaks over and then you see I've triggered my hotkeys. I get filled instantly. Again, move that stop loss up in place. Um, I move it right below this double bottom. And generally a double bottom uh, is a good sign that there's going to be a reversal, but you never know, you know how far things are gonna go or if they're even really gonna reverse or they're just gonna kind of oscillate around an, a level and then continue down further. None of that really matters to me. Um, it's all about these extreme levels being broken and that's what really decides whether or not I take a trade on a ticker symbol. And I've already showed you, you know, what my actual entries are. So now um, in, in this case, this is only trade number two. Normally I allow myself to take three trades per day. But in this case, if this trade fails, I have to stop trading because if this trade fails, that means that this level was broken. And I do not go and look for some other opportunity somewhere else on a ticker symbol, some other opportunity to lose more money. Uh, is really what that usually ends up being because I've already used up, well, in this case, only two trades, but I know based on my statistics that my second and third trade are more likely to work out than my first trade. So any subsequent trade on a new ticker symbol will be uh, trade number one. And I know that trade number one is more likely to lose so far than any other trade. So why would I want to um, take that chance and, and just add to my red day? So that's that's why I stop either, you know, once I get stopped out three times, or in this case, if I get stopped out at a level below the weak point of the price action, as far as I define it. Okay, let's fast forward and see what happens here. So this thing's looking like it's got some potential. It goes all the way up to 1216, but then look what happens. It comes right back down. 
nothing for me to do. I just keep my stop loss and profit target in place. I let the trade play out. Now it gaps up a little bit. It's looking like the volume is kind of fading on this thing. Now that does happen um, on stocks that are trading very strongly with a lot of initial volume. A lot of times people like me are looking for a very specific entry point and they're just kind of watching and waiting and you'll see the volume kind of dwindle. And then all of a sudden an entry gets triggered and volume comes in uh, like gangbusters, you know, pushing the price in one direction or the other. So. This is really, uh, although it, it's a little bit worrisome like while you're in the trade, but it's not really necessarily um, saying that this trade is not going to work out. So let's keep on moving here. So ultimately I do get stopped out of this trade. It's gonna happen in just a moment. And it is unfortunate. Hopefully you don't feel like I dragged you on because that was not the intent of this uh, video. I just want to show you um, what happens in real life when you're trading with real money and you're using a trading plan and how to stick to that trading plan. Because if I do not stick to this trading plan and do all those things that I told you there, it stops me out. Then everything I'm doing is really pointless because I will not know if what I'm doing really works or not. So again, we're going to go over all of that data that we've tracked so far on this plan on Sunday morning. I'll release a video. And other than that, I'm going to just keep trading this plan as it is for now. We have to take it out to at least 100 trades to see if it works or not. Some days it's working, some days it isn't, but no, no plan works 100% of the time, that is for sure. And then if you have a plan that works just enough to make you profitable, if you're not able to follow that plan 100% of the time, then you're not going to be able to make any money. So that's the other point of this exercise is uh, just building up trader discipline and being able to follow that plan. And part of that is taking losses just like we did today. So anyway, hopefully you learned something from, the, from this video. If you did find it helpful, hit the like button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. As always, you have to go into every single trade with a plan and you need to be able to follow that plan 100%. That means always taking your stop losses, honoring your profit targets, and then maybe in the long run, you could be green. Take care.